Look, I got a mobile podcast. I'm on a podcast on a roller coaster, Jules. Hang on, look. <laughs> I need to know, was it a splatter scene off the top of a roof? Was it a drunk on with this? Was it 18 shots into the skull via three guns? I need to know. The way a man kills himself is very important to me. All right, we're Manscape, shave your balls, shave your nuts, shave everything that you've got. It's Manscape. Okay, let's go back to the show. <laughs> hey, Tony, so how did you get in a stand up? That, okay, when we come, first, oh, another word from Manscape shave your nuts. I like to bend over and shave my Willy Wong three shades down, and it never cuffs me. <laughs> and I know a thing or two about getting cuts on my Willy by Manscaped. It's like, kill him. <laughs> kill him fucking now. Shoot him dead. Wait till you see this motherfucker show. <laughs> Steve-O, I'm telling you, please, can we make a pact to kill him? No. If we have enough people sign a thing, I think you're allowed to kill somebody. <laughs> Sorry, Steve-O. It is not okay to ever like Tony Hinchcliffe. He is the BDSM bandit. He's a snake. His wiener is a USB cord. Okay. If you're watching Kill Tony like we do, you're allowed to. For Brian Redband. Roaches in your closet. Yeah. Let me find out when I come over, they be high. Yeah. Let me find out you wearing scrubs all in church. Let me find out you telling people you were on page 143 and 144. <laughs> My escape is that which captures me completely. Next page. I've always sought peace, and peace is what I found. I mean, have you ever seen a bigger... Even Marco from the Trail Recon has got a better cookbook than this. And he got a lot of hate. This cannot stand. We got to report this to Amazon. This is a lie. This is I like if like one of my phone. wrist guards was just a thimble. He could be just as good as, uh, big as, uh, what's it, Rupi Kapoor. This or can't be a book. <laughs> yeah, then I'm doing a book like this. It's $100. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. I think that you should write a book of poems like that. You can. You should take... I'm making Mike write in a diary right now. We're doing a little thing where we both write it. No, 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 no. It's a book burning. Book. It's no, a no. book burning. No, no, no. no Isn't no. Jules so dumb she thinks a book's going to just light? I mean, you know how hard like that it is? about to. It's oh, God. Girls know nothing about the flame. <laughs> Do they, fellas? They don't know what lights would... She probably thinks this is dangerous. I mean... She would freak if she saw that. I take this, I throw it behind my back as if it's sugar, and I make it a recipe, and I'm praying for her health. Oh. Well, why don't I take the lighter to some of your supplements? Whoa! Because not my that? L-glutamine! That would be a big fucking deal. By the way, I'm using thorn supplements. That's just as good as drunken elephant for skincare, by the way. <laughs> Drunk elephant, which I'm also using. <laughs> okay. We own every product that they make, even the bronzer and rose drips. <laughs> All right, what's next on the show notes? You know People want should, show notes, Jules. You know what would be a good one? Tony Hinchcliffe on Steve O's podcast. Do you guys want to see the biggest little fucking loser you've ever seen? And if you guys think Tony is like cool now because he said chink once, uh uh. Watch this. Chink, chink, chink. So I'm three times cooler than him now? <laughs> It is not okay to ever like Tony Hinchcliffe. He is the BDSM bandit. He's a snake. His wiener is a USB cord. Okay. Uh, he's disgusting in every way. Uh, he's pathetic. His jokes, if, if, if he makes a joke ever, he's got to make sure you hear it by repeating it three times and then stepping up as if he's a prince. It's not a bit. He's not playing a character. He's a revolting man. You know how I do all these revolting things? So this is a well-practiced character. Tony is going up there being himself. You hate themselves if they're just slightly off. Remember your rules. Never break your rules. Tony is not cool and he is unwatchable. If you're watching Kill Tony like we do, you're allowed to. For Brian Redband. We support Redband. Yes. Hinchcliffe is not to be. You don't take a picture with him. You don't go to his show. You don't say hi to him. You antagonize, you harass. Okay? You despise. And if you don't despise him, you're not one of us. 
Okay. But it's fair because Kill Tony is a pretty entertaining show. It is. That doesn't mean you like Tony. But this is why this is good because we don't get to see Tony out in the wild as often as we yes. do. Yes. So here's him on Steve O's podcast. And we yeah. get to see the real him. You for guys once know Steve O, my new Steve O. You know, Steve O is the most useless, <laughs> unneeded guy in Hollywood history. And everybody knows it. Everybody who's around him instantly knows, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into with Steve O? I mean, this guy could take a Robinson BMX bike and make it look like the most boring drawing of just a wheel. He sucks the life out of anything he comes to. Stuntman? More like, what's the opposite of a stunt? Something that just bores me to God's green death. Steve-O is that. Uh, Everything that comes out of his mouth is boring and irritating and long-winded. I hate looking at him. He does eight Manscaped ads a second. I mean, the minute I see him, he's going, Manscaped, shave your balls, shave your nuts, shave everything that you've got. It's Manscaped. Okay, let's go back to the show. <laughs> hey, Tony, so how did you get in a stand-up? That, okay, when we come, first, oh, another word from Manscaped, shave your nuts. I like to bend over and shave my Willy Wong three shades down, and it never cuffs me. <laughs> and I know a thing or two about getting cuts on my Willy by Manscaped. It's like, kill him. <laughs> kill him fucking now. Shoot him dead. Wait till you see this motherfucker show. <laughs> Steve, oh, I'm telling you, please, can we make a pact to kill him? No. If we have enough people sign a thing, I think you're allowed to kill somebody. <laughs> Sorry, Steve-O. Hold on, I closed a pe- uh, very important tab here. Sorry, Steve-O. Okay, it's I got to show up. you. It's a next up. Tony Hinchcliffe on Steve-O's wild ride. You know, he's another moron who thinks, oh my God, I have the best idea. We're going to make a podcast studio on wheels. It's been done. I remember when Eddie Ift thought he was going to make a mobile podcast studio out of a uh, you know, out of a out of a, a old van, it's been done. And guess what? Guess what you get at the end of the day? You get an eighty thousand dollar minimum project. And by the way, they are only spending anything eighty thousand dollars. Have you seen how revolting the interiors of these podcast vans are? I mean, literally. I, I I've been to picnic benches holding an iPhone that you know have more credibility than these studios. So they're sitting there, and they what they do is they always raise money. We're going to build a mobile podcast uh, van. It's going to be me. And then they get there, and what is it? It's two guys sitting on the widest lens you've ever seen in the crappiest little booth, and they were all shoved in there with a handheld microphone. It looks like shit. It sounds like shit. I wouldn't want to be there for two seconds. You wouldn't want to ride in it. You wouldn't want to sit in it. Sit in a normal room like a man. You don't need a podcast Booth on wheels. Trust me. And all these guys seem to get this idea in their head. Steve has done this now. And he thinks everyone's going to be like, how did you get microphones and a laptop in this car? You know, I just how you could have this in a, a Scion if you wanted to. It's not very complicated. You know, here, look, I got a mobile podcast. I'm on a podcast on a roller coaster, Jules. Hang on, look. <laughs> It's called a phone in a man. Okay, but not Steve-O. He thinks, dude, you know what's going to blow the world's mind? And it's like, fuck that voice too. I'll slit your throat to make that voice stop. Watch this. Here, cut to this. Come on, Steve-O. So he's being a little slow here. Is this YouTube premium? This is a premium feature of this program here. Yeah, let, let me yeah, let, let me explain about. Here he is. Look at this. He's in a van. Hey, everybody, and welcome to it. A- oh, that <laughs> shut him up. I'll remember that. Okay, here is stupid dumbass Steve O, who is so and he's he's not a bad guy. He's like a nice guy. He just doesn't know what's going on anymore. You know, seriously, take a PPO loan from COVID and get the fuck out of here, please. I don't want to see your face anymore. You know, you're, and Johnny Knoxville is so dumb. All these guys, they can't even hold, you know, a conversation for a second. So here's Steve-O. Look at this nonsense. I hate him. Hey, 
everybody, and welcome to a deadly wild ride with Steve-O. Okay. Comedy fans rejoice. We've got the He's host stealing of comedy. Kill Tony, Tony Hinchcliffe. Yeah, dude, this one's really, really <laughs> deep <laughs> into the comedy scene and how it's moved from L.A. to Austin, Texas. Of course, <laughs> Rogan and Tony Hinchcliffe are out there He's, with look a at bunch this of other world-class comics. So this one's particularly juicy. And speaking of comedy, I'm on my bucket list tour in Charleston, South Carolina right now. But these are the last dates of my bucket list. I had a conversation. Taping. I had a conversation with a spider that was less annoying than this. my bucket list tour coming up. You guys got it. Look at this fucking asshole. He's always plugging. He's always got 800 little shows that you need to tune into at 800 tour stops and 800 books. And he's doing this, he's doing that. No one cares. Jump off a skyscraper to your death. I will show up. I will pay to see that. Please, one last stunt. <laughs> And, Wait, you uh, can't say that this week because it's a very sad week for suicide. Oh, my God. Yeah, the uh, haircut to me. Let's talk about suicide before we go into uh, making a man do it. <laughs> uh, there is a man named Kip Cappy <laughs> from the Ellen to Jenner show, and he killed himself. Um, we spoke to Jules' mom about the incident. Can you read, please, what your mom said? Please, Jules, please just read what your mom said. We're talking about Ellen's DJ they found him dead. Uh, immediately, the news told everybody. Um, this is very sad for people because yes. he's been around for a Please while. Please read what your mom... We went straight to Jules' mom to find out what... Because I forgot to laugh. Sorry, I didn't mean to press that. We're going straight to Jules' mom, who's nearly 70, by the way. No, she's not. And we're going to ask her uh, what she, why this guy committed suicide. I Let's, really like this message. So yeah, listen to this, folks. So sorry. Listen to this. She did say, she said, he always seemed so happy. Maybe since the Ellen show was over, he couldn't find work. <laughs> so that's okay. That's one take on it. Maybe he killed himself because since the Ellen show ended, he couldn't find work. <laughs> Show business is tough. Man, and what did you say you back, know, by the way? I said, so true, or yeah. something like that. Yep, yep, yep. So, <laughs> the world is talking about you, mister, and uh, we're all trying to figure out why you killed yourself. Thank you to the news for just uh, bringing your most personal of moments to all of our homes. You know, I would never even think about you, Slappy, Cappy, or whatever you call yourself. Twitch. Twitch? <laughs> Was his name, yes. And how did he kill himself? Did they say it in the article? Can somebody get me the weapon of choice? How did he kill himself? Because I'm thinking of killing myself soon. <laughs> so I'd like to know. How did he kill himself? How did Ellen DeGeneres' DJ kill himself? Will this be tied back to Ellen herself? I hope not. You know, because people give Ellen a hard time. As if she should treat... You know, Ellen is dealing with basically the lighter senders. Ellen's fine. Ellen's perfectly fine. And then the stuff's like, Ellen is so mean to me. Like, she doesn't even appreciate. She doesn't know you. You know, what should she be? But they're going to blame Ellen. Ellen is so mean. Yeah, you can't be mean. You want everybody to be nice? So, do we have anything, Jules? What was his suicide? Oh, sorry. I'm asking you! I know, I'm sorry. I'm doing It's her birthday tomorrow. Yeah. Today, we find out it's Jules' birthday tomorrow. We're celebrating here on the show. T today, we find out, does she deserve a present? What does she get? You know. They just said he was found at a hotel. He was found at a hotel, and they always do this. They never tell us how he died. No one in the chat knows how this guy died. I say we don't talk about it till we find out how he died. I need to know, was it a splatter scene off the top of a roof? Was it a drunk on his nose? Was it 18 shots into the skull via three guns? I need to know. The way a man kills himself is very important to me. All right, we're taking drink number four on the show. If you'd like to have a drink with me, come on down. Let's play some drinking music for the people. Okay. Thank you, Hella Mark. Can you believe he said that about me? 
All right, let's go back to Tony Hinchcliffe on Steve-O. And remind me, I want to tell people about Stavi. I'll remind you. Stavros. Here is Tony Hinchcliffe on... Uh, yeah, let, let me... Uh, on Steve-O. This was fucking something. If you thought you liked uh, Steve-O, if you thought you liked um, uh, Tony Hinchcliffe, think again. You know, I had to get in the comment section of this video and go, what is happening here, folks? You know, can we snap out of it? You know, you're reading these comments. Oh, I really love. Why don't you it. read a couple of the comments yeah, first? Yeah, let's do that. Let's read some of the comments and see. Because my definition of what I just saw here is completely different. So let's see. Oh, look. Here's my comment here. Extremely boring interview. Not to mention Tony's told the same boring story over 100 times now on 100 different podcasts that are all, all the, exactly the same. How many times are you going to tell? How many times are you all going to interview each other? <laughs> Remember, folks, they were only doing this to sell ads. Zero no, likes. No likes. That's nothing. Nice. <laughs> and here's what I meant with. Look at this. Tony's done more for comedy than anyone else in his era. His legacy is much more than getting laughs. An already noble cause. Wow. Shout out to 10 years of Tilconi. Such a crazy and hilarious show. Tony is on another level. He is here to help everybody. That wants to help themselves. This is what's happening here. Um, I love this theater Steve-O records his videos in. I mean, look at this world that I'm like <laughs> completely the opposite of my world, right? Okay, so let's see this video. Let's see if you like this crap. This is what you're getting. Here, watch. <laughs> everybody and welcome to a deadly wild ride with steve-o comedy fans rejoice we've got the host so. of kill tony tony hinchcliffe this better be good yeah dude this one's really really deep into the comedy scene and how it's moved from la to austin texas of course rogan and tony hinchcliffe are out there with a bunch of other world-class comics so this one's particularly juicy and Speaking of comedy, I'm on my bucket list tour in of course. Charleston, South Carolina money. right you now. Your money. These are the last dates of my bucket list tour. I'm actually taping my special in multiple cities. Albuquerque, Little Rock, we don't Arkansas, want that. Alabama, to name a Those few. Those are horrible cities. Um, and... I'm bringing it international. We don't care. Australia, you've been begging for the bucket Why list would tour, they beg for it's this? it's coming your way. More on that later. This is how Red but, Bar started, at least when Red Bar starts to get a lot of funny things happening, presents, all this stuff. Here they're just talking about how can they get some more money out of you. And if you're not in one of these cities he mentioned, why the fuck would you care about any of this information? And this is what they do. They beat you down. He cuts back to him in this fucking theater a thousand times. Shifty eyed, telling you with zero confidence about the things you need to buy from him. And they all do. I think it's gone on long enough. Having you, let's put a stop to these guys. I, I mean, you know, I'm more inspired by Michael. Let's put these people in prison. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens. Thank <laughs> God, because dirty. that's what keeps me. Oh, so my God. So you got to see this. Dude, you know, you could just skip it. You can't anymore. You skip ahead. You'll be going through halfway in. Oh, there, maybe you can skip ahead. Okay. Well, here it is. Tony Hinchcliffe, the remarkable Tony Hinchcliffe on Steve-O. And let's get into it. Very cool. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Hinchcliffe. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. yeah. What's up? We are in Austin, Texas. So here he is in his van that he drives around because everybody wants to just hang out in somebody's van in the back, smushed, you know, shot by the worst cameras in history. You know, Bill Maher's uh, vision sometimes uh, rings nicer than some of these. They're all green. The color balance is off. <laughs> The noise floor is loud. It's not a fun time. So I'm having a hard time finding out where these commenters come from. What are they watching that I'm not seeing? Yep. This van was driven all the way from Los Angeles to Austin, Texas. I've made that drive. Yeah. It's a wild one. 
Yeah, dude. There's nothing yeah. between Phoenix and here, pretty much. Baby. You know, Tony, I don't know where he picks out these clothes. <laughs> well, he thinks he looks like Kendall Roy. Oh, yeah. For sure. That's who he's So emulating. Tony thinks he's Kendall Roy from HBO's <laughs> Dasha's Succession. He's in love with the sun. R to the O G. G to the O I. He's obnoxious. What does it go? <laughs> uh, I love succession, but I don't think I'm one of the characters. Tony sees shows and he goes, finally somebody understands me and now I have something. And that's what he's doing. This is like what Kendall Roy would wear. Yeah. You know, coming back from yoga to the office or some bull. Tony thinks he's Kendall Roy. That's shamefully embarrassing. Here, here's yeah, El Paso is the only. Oof. You don't want to stop there. You don't. I stopped there at an Olive Garden. For some reason, I'm like, this will be a good idea. And, and <laughs> Nice! A mustache! B-T-Y. Look at this. I mean, this is snively whiplash. Look at the mustache I give to you. That's nice. Look at this. I could drown having this if I went into water. You know how much water this holds? You know, I could get a Cherokee cleaned in 10 minutes with this thing. <laughs> and then this guy comes on here with this. You want to get molested down the water slide? Join Tony. In his thin-lipped, thin mustache, chaotic disgrace. So I've got him beat on the mustache. I got him beat on the body. I got him beat on the head. I got him beat on the voice. But do you have him beat on the roasting? Uh, well, we'll find out. Let's, let's to listen. 318. Let's listen to Tony's uh, lore here. 318? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, oh. 313 here. Olive Garden. You You'll be oh. frozen. I didn't get food poisoning, but it was it was just a nightmare. How I, long have you been in Austin? About two cool years. Cool question. Now. Cool years. question. Wow. And How long have you been in Austin for? Well, that's cool to know. I've always wanted to know how long he has been in Austin. <laughs> I was in LA for 16 years, and I came out here and got hooked, man. Hooked. Yeah. Whole different ball game. We were at your show the other night. Mm-hmm. And you were you and the one dude were ripping on each other. Yeah, it pretty was quickly. really, really impressive. Well, what I'm impressed with is because, like, uh, uh, you know, I read that you grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, mm -hmm. and like that was like kind of like a defense mechanism. Yeah. So, like, when you go places, by default, are you constantly yeah, doing that to people? No, I don't do it. I have an, a, such an incredible amount of outlets for it um, that being one every Monday I have David Lucas there to go back and forth with so it's like I'm like a power lifter that gets to go to the gym oh. you know if he doesn't go to the gym he's <laughs> probably out here what this is you're allowing this you're all allowing this this is not allowed it's like going to, it's like being a power lift, lifter at the gym because I'm practicing my heavy rest lifting <laughs> on David Lucas. I mean, wait till you hear some of this shit. We thought the documentary's bad. Remember when I covered his documentary, it got more views than his documentary. That made him very upset. <laughs> um, this is just like this. This is three men, really. Let's talk. If you hate Hollywood, you must hate this. Out there breaking windows and throwing shit and you know road rage, but what, what I, right, you, but to be clear, what what these guys are doing, what Tony's doing with this like improv insult comedy is so it's it's indicative of such intelligence. <laughs> you can't become like super intelligent as a defense mechanism. Sure you can. You could be fucking playing. Okay, so none of you even know what the hell you're talking about. This is really nice. Inside comedy here. All right, do we have another time you can code? keep playing it for Okay, a listen to this. Chess, if you grew up in a household where, like, you're only a child and you're just, like, a chess psycho. Yeah. I don't know. I, I would, I'm just saying I was wildly impressed. Well, I was wildly impressed, too. Well, what's yeah. crazy, if I, could, if I could share this with you, is that we've been doing this show... 
forever. It's, we're coming up on our 10 year anniversary of Kill Tony, right? And David has been a regular on David it. David Lucas. I think, for three or four years. So that's 52 new minutes a year. If we're if we don't take him on the road with us, some special Friday Saturday tapings and big theaters yeah. and stuff, so that's at even more than fifty two minutes a year, which means that we're roasting each other because that normally lasts, we'll say you know f- at least five minutes at minimum five minutes. We go back and forth every right. week, completely so improvised, and it's all new, and it's always new. It's never. New. It's always the same shit. And by the way, it's David roasting you, going, man, you look like a gay Geppetto. And then you go, <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> yep, I'm a gay Geppetto. Yep, that's what I do. Yeah, I mean, that's what yeah. That's not a roast back. And then Tony will be like, David, you look like a big mountain or something like that. Great. <laughs> and you're talking about this? This would be like if I talked about how I poured champagne on the show at the beginning. How wonderful it was. It's obviously framed in the same, you know, thing. Yeah. He makes fun of me for being feminine or gay or whatever his angle is at that point. And I make fun of him for being, you know, big and black. I'm a pasty white guy. He's a black guy. It's, I think it's something, you know, this part's corny, He's but smart. I think it's something that should be more seen and under, you know, yeah. like put out there because it's... It's, you know, it's, it's what's cool. It's my show, and I want the clicks. All right, what's Anyways, our next time code? I mean, this is terrible. They talk about Austin for a long ass yeah. time, but we can skip that. Please. Um, at 1340, I thought this was funny that steve was doing an ad for Hello Tushy right after he's trying to sell butt wipes. It's like they don't need your I butt know. wipes so if they already bought Hello Steve-O Tushy. steve is selling his own brand of butt wipes. Ha ha, how funny, and sell, sell, sell. Then he does an ad for Tushy, the, the podcast bidet, where you clip it on. And don't worry, it's not using the shit water. It's using fresh water. If you're spraying lines of agua <laughs> up your race, you're gay. Okay. Sorry, I've been watching the Sebastian special. Um, Watch this. Anything can possibly happen. Right. And we had a lot of bad bucket pulls back then. Well, there's a lot of mental illness in L.A. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they find their right. way on stage sometimes. And we yeah. also had, like, yeah. bona fide, like, breakout stars. Huge. Um, Speaking of huge, I wonder how huge... This is what happened. They're in the middle of talking. He busts in. For what, you might ask? This anxiety is about Christmas gift giving this year. Are you just gonna go? This is 14 minutes into the show, so he did three ads up top. He lets it run for 13 minutes and then busts into another ad, middle of conversation, and you're allowing this. Go ahead and do the old boring gift card thing, or are you gonna do something? Awesome, original, with and they all talk to you as if you're like a second grader, and they're uh, a magician that came in to lunch that the teacher is allowing for some sort of and special Hello occasion. Hello Tushy is not a good gift. You're going to love Hello Tushy. It's going to be a gift that you. You know why they can't say it normally? Because it's very awkward, and they don't believe in it. So they all have to. <laughs> I mean, this must stop. Anyways, HelloTushy.com. What's HelloTushy.com? It's my favorite Well, sponsor. I thought you were selling butt wipes. Is your partner, you know, you're advertising for a bidet? Do ad companies even know? They're like, all competing with each other. Me undies and then GoCommando.com. <laughs> Manscaped and uh, Hims. You're growing your hair. You're shaving it off. That was a good one. They're doing manscape, they're doing hymns. One grows your hair, one's shaving it off. That's competing. <laughs> I liked it. Okay, what's your next time um, code? <clears throat> you can go to 3525 for more of Tony's roasting talk, which is my fave. 25. And no one cares because they want to be scaped. 3525. There we go. Here's some more hell for you. Right. Okay. Silly shit back in the day. Do you already know what you would say to me if I 
talk shit to you? Did you come up with the? I mean, what do we already know? He's like, uh, why well, feel like now that you said that? In between, when his you voice st- is like the sound of electricity going through a copper wire. <laughs> this is uh, my impression of uh, Stevo. <laughs> but in the background, that. Zzz, <laughs> Wait, that's Steve-o. him. Steve-O. Play it again, that's him. Here, this is Steve-O. In the back. <laughs> that's him. Said that, and now... Yeah. He already has. That's when it happens. I mean, I didn't know that fucking Mythbusters had Down syndrome over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was just curious how quickly it happens. Like, because I, I feel like, you know, when I'm driving, I'm just like, this fucking. That's his rose stroke to him. I didn't know Mythbusters had Down syndrome. And this guy is such a complete ass, by the way. I know. It's, it's like, like fuck please, you, dude. Can, you. First of all, you probably raped a handful of people. <laughs> how many stories you got about a bad date? And also, you'll probably commit suicide because you're such a weak beta. Who is this guy? I'd like to push him in front of the tracks. I was just wondering how fast it happens. Yeah. Meet me at the tracks. I'll be behind you with a push. <laughs> and I come up with shit in my head. Yeah. But like, is that, that's what I want to ask him if it's like by default. And then you go tape another episode of Adam Ruins Everything. <laughs> <laughs> so it just happens like... It happens. Yeah, well, you don't even know that reference. <laughs> Adam Ruins Everything. You know why we know that? Because of Joe Rogan. He's bringing this guy on. Things like that, huh? I mean, I don't know. I guess so. With shoes like that, you must know what it's like. I'm kidding. I don't know. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> that's, that's good, I, I, I was just so impressed oh, with you. Oh, look at Tony. Oh. He tried to do Kendall, but he's still coming off as gallery yeah. woman. Well, somehow. he's coming off as very French to me. <laughs> boo. Essay of Aja Boo. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this French fuck sitting on his train going to Germany. <laughs> what a fucking loser. <laughs> oh my God, Pierre. Estavaja Look at him. What a gallery women woman. <laughs> Are you going to show me the latest art by Vinci of a douche? <laughs> Look at you. Can we burn the rest of you away? <laughs> Ugh. Let's hear some more. You guys going back and forth at the show, it was just, uh, I was like, fuck, man, how do you do that? Yeah, it's a weird muscle. You know, I was oh. watching, uh, my buddy sent me a clip of Rick Rubin talking with Joe Rogan about different rappers' processes, mm-hmm. about how, you know, uh, Eminem writes everything down. He writes Ooh. all day into a notebook, it's tiny little mama. letters, words, every th- single thing he just writes. And Jay Z writes nothing. And this person yeah. does that, and this yeah. person does that. And, Mind blowing. You know, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's just like we got good at not having to write it down, take what's given to you. You know, Jay-Z would listen to a beat. and huh. E.T. on the handles. <laughs> Handlebars like a Xanax. Pretty good. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus, man. You pause me, you're not seeing something like this. Fuck, dude. Oh, I wish he had little gold hoops. Yes, I do wish he, he had gold hoops. So do we good. have another time code for this chode? Um, keep. There's a good part coming up. Oh, uh, keep playing? Yeah, just for a few Listen minutes. to this. Huh, huh, huh. And not have any idea of what the song could be and whatever, and goes right on the other side of a wall on the other side of the glass and makes that background beat a fucking iconic hit that mm-hmm. we all know that everybody yeah. yells in the middle of the God. night. What? It's just like it was meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, problem. of course, I'm comparing me calling David Lucas a fat black guy uh, to Jay Z. So, so I have to catch myself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you and Josh Danny should get together and give each other's couples massages. That's what you should be doing. Look at this. That could heat a room. This could heat a Honda. This could get you up a hill on an old bike. Yikes, man. Is there more here? Yeah. Listen to this. Right now, I, I think it's uh, it's completely fair to, you know, it's, it's all improv. Yeah, it is. Improv sucks. wild, man. And it's something that I get to look forward to. And you try to apply topical things to it and, like, what's in the news, maybe. Like you know, so- I called him Hershey Walker for the first time 
last yeah. night. Hershey or Monday Walker. night. That's yeah, just Hershey second. Walker. Yeah. For because re- Herschel Walker is a... And David Lucas is a spook. And uh, Hershey, because he's eating them all. You think this guy got fat from eating Hershey bars? He'd be sick to his stomach. From all the acidity from that chocolate. <laughs> he's eating other things. Idiot. Reason it works. <laughs> chocolate bar. Herschel yeah. Walker mm-hmm. just we lost know. his yep. election. Yep. Oh, oh. oh, did he, did he lose? Thank you for explaining. I think so, yeah. Yeah. He said Georgia. That, that yeah. David Lucas said, how bad of a politician do you have to be to go in a runoff against Herschel Walker? Yeah. It's kind of funny. You want to know an interesting thing you guys might find it? Uh, cool is that after that roast with David Lucas, I realized that there was a joke that I should have done, mm-hmm. and those bother me. That yeah. happens a lot where it's like, oh, we did so good, but I could have done this. Yeah. Because remember how he had the wings on the back of his shirt? Mm-hmm. And I oh and, and I go, oh, that's going to be a rough takeoff. Mm-hmm. I realized afterwards that I should have said, that's going to be a rough takeoff. That's going to be worse than the takeoff that takeoff had the other day when he took <laughs> off. Like yeah. I could have just like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Got to me. <laughs> Let the rhythm take me over. I love- Sorry, this is a song I sing to get myself uh, out of trouble. I love more. Let the rhythm take me over. I'm furious. I'm about to snap. I love more. Hold on, you're in my Hold on. Okay. Everyone, take a break. Oh, sweet justice. Uh,. Okay. So, that would have been awesome. Yeah. Even Steve was going, eee. Oh, yeah, because takeoff died, man. You really won't go anywhere. And I you guys are it. violating two wesses. I got to hear it one more time. Yeah, let's hear that one more time. This is what Tony and he would start- have done. And he starts with going, here's a little tidbit you guys would like to hear. Wow. I mean, I don't think this stuff's being analyzed. Are you guys doing dishes while watching this show? Snap out of it! Yeah. Because remember how he had the wings on the back of his mm-hmm. shirt? And I and, and I go, oh, that's going to be a rough takeoff. Mm-hmm. I realized afterwards that I should have said, that's going to be a rough takeoff. That's going to be worse than the takeoff that takeoff had the other day when he took <laughs> off. Like, yeah. I could have just like, boom, 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 because the rapper takeoff got shot right. in the head. I mean, you got to go to jail. <laughs> you have to be arrested. I can't do that. I can't do any of this. I'd be killed for being a Jew. I can't believe this. I just can't believe what we're watching. And this is where you're, oh, Tony's pretty cool. Tony's pretty cool. He's not. None of them are cool. To end this off, you could go to 1530 15, when I skip by, 30. but it's pretty good where he talks about. 15? Yeah. 1530. Okay. Let's hear this. 1530. Pretty much this whole podcast was great, but we can't be here all day. We cannot. Talk about these huge stars. Huge preacher Lawson. Uh, oh my God. So many. Okay, so listen to this. Before they go to break, we can't go back that far. We'll get lost. Before they go to break, they go, Tony, why don't you tell us what big stars have come out of Kill Tony? Because Tony's always bragging. Oh, yeah, Kill Tony has launched the careers of most comics you see today. So they ask him, well, who's it launched? And who are the big stars we might know from Kill Tony? Listen to this. Huge preacher Lawson, uh, so many of them. I mean, all the, the regulars. The are- girl that uh, the ended up going on Rogan. Um, Ali Mikovsky. So, so far, preacher Lawson and the girl who ended up going up the beekeeper from David McCarroll's post. Uh, Suzanne Santo. No, Ali Mikovsky is celebrity number two out of their mouths. So many of them. I mean, all the, the regulars. The are, girl that uh, the, ended up going on Rogan. Um, Ali Mikovsky. Yeah. Yeah. What, she, she came from Kill Tony? Yeah. And she oh, just yeah. blew up? She oh, was, uh, yeah, because you're like, wait, who is she? She's blown up? No, she is not blown up. In fact, look at her apartment. 
Very not blown up. It should be blown up. The city should blow it up to make way for luxury condos. No one has blown up. Let's hear Let's hear some more. Like every week she was on Kill Tony. Yep. She would do a new minute every week. And so, but. And Kim Congdon and Sarah Weinshank. You look a girl. And, you Sarah know. Weinshank, 72 eval, uh, psych ward eval just last year because Brody Stevens died. They had to send her to a psych ward for a 72 hour eval. They said she's nuts. Kim Congdon, a streetwalker, an only fawn. Uh, begging for Boutte and Monte. Uh, you look good, girl. Her grandpa. So, so far, we've got Ali Makovsky, Kim Congdon, Sarah Weintrick, the stars created by Tony Sands. William, David, Michael Lair. Michael Lair, the guy who last week was going to kill himself if Joe Rogan didn't give him 200 grand a month. And now he's back. Screaming. And I was saying earlier in the <laughs> chat to someone. Yeah. Love Michael Lair. Yeah, love course. Michael Lair, of course. Very sad. Awesome prayers. Awesome prayers. The little uh, video they did for his last oh appearance was a little long. A little saying. long. A little longer long. than his life should be. I mean, I was so excited for Michael Lair to go to dirt. <laughs> I wasn't. No, of course. We don't want to see a man die, but, you know, he's. It was kind of stupid. It's like, I'm going to kill my dad. I'm going to kill my dad. Okay, here's the 200 grand. Don't kill yourself. Thank you. I'm back. Great. What does this do for me? <laughs> now I need 200 grand or I'm going to kill myself. I swear to God. Because he's back. <laughs> sorry, Lair. But you just mean nothing to me. I'm so sorry. You like Tony? I hate you. Bull sip. Because I can't believe I said that to Lair. <laughs> I know. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, Lair. Uh, let's Lair Lair into the dirt. Uh, wow. Um, William Montgomery. <laughs> Sorry. And. And? Yeah. And? I'm missing a couple. Uh, you're, the, are you missing a couple? William Montgomery, Michael Lair, Ali Makovsky, and. Uh, yeah, maybe I should stop saying that I've. Uh, <laughs> Change the lives of w w William, uh, the Chinese guy is on the show. <laughs> yeah, he didn't say huh. He uh, really... was able to get his first car. Wonderful. You know, these aren't really comics, <laughs> according to anybody else, but like this little bar that you hang out in. The, the guy that you guys, I mean, because Tom Segura was there last and he was like, yeah, you want to come on the road with me? Like it just happens like that. I, I don't know that Tom Segura said you want to. You know what? Me. I'm going to kill myself if the fans don't get together <laughs> 200 grand a month. I am. What method? Wait, I don't want them to see my shorts. <laughs> I'm Lex Fridman from downstairs. I just got one penis holding me up. It's waist and a dick to the ground. <laughs> um, I can't believe Lair did that, man. Sneaky deaky lair, huh? He wanted the money. He won't gonna no kill him, no. Prove it. <laughs> Show me the plane ticket that he was getting to Seattle for the exercise. The final frontier. I don't know. Listen, it's it's very funny to joke about Michael Lair, and any comic would appreciate that because free speech. Of course. So I don't know what to tell you. All right, do we have any more codes from this terrible, I mean, yeah, boring show? But let's go yeah, that's okay. Else. Let's go to something else because it's fun and uh, we've maybe got we a should whole do show. Sebastian's special. Do you guys? Why am wait. I losing steam? According no, to you, no, not at all. Cut to me. But wait, can we go on a quick like? Yeah, we got to go on a break. break. Of course, we haven't taken Two one break seconds. yet. How many hours have we been on? Um, three fifty-three. Oh gosh, so four hours, no break, and four hours. Your other shows do. 47 minutes and then they go bye bye consider this we're going to take a break we'll be right back with much more on your bread bar we'll see you in a bit okay Jules. can I read what it said sure I get death threats <laughs> no, I think you have for to doing this show I mean I'm not online anywhere all you see is me doing this show right is there anything I've done on the show that deserves death threat why just take a chill pill I don't know why we can't do death together. 
I tried this on Jason Voorhees once when he came to try to kill me. I go, can't we kill people together? And he goes, no, 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 I'm not falling for that. So I try to do it.